President Biden now rolling back a Trump era pandemic policy. Without Title 42 in effect, how bad can the border crisis get? You're going to see a surge. 15 to 18,000 people uh, a day. That's what is expected once Title 42 goes away. Hey, I got a group uh, right away east, ready for some courts. It looks pretty recent. See, this, this is the drag marks. This is when they low crawl underneath. Yeah. So, of course, right here, they're, they're, they're trying to, uh, this is what we call a, a low crawl. Mm -hmm. They low crawl underneath the fence line. This tells me that it's very recent. Trying to maintain operational control of the border is something that you know every sector chief wants to do. For us, because we're a finite resource, there's only so many ways that we can kind of affect that. So as special operations, we just provide a group of you know nationally trained, equipped, and organized uh, personnel that kind of re respond to national level threats. Right now, with all the stuff going on on the southwest border, we're kind of spread thin along the southwest border, kind of dealing with some of those things going down there. Oh, you're over here. See the footprints right there? Oh, this got me. 900 to one. So remember, sir, the three mountains I told you? Mm -hmm. That's where they're heading. The way we like to do is we kind of like to go into an area, see which alien smuggling organizations, drug smuggling organizations are working in the area, identify some of the key players on the north side, and then start working at dismantling those networks. And then hopefully within a couple weeks, a couple of months, we can turn that sector or that zone over to a, a sector chief or a patrol agent in charge says hey you know what this organization that was giving you trouble now we've kind of dismantled them a little bit so you guys can kind of push up and get more operational control of your border they come out here and lay down for a while get a little break and then they continue on you see how they flatten up that whole area that's not cattle you can you can try to catch as many people and catch as many pounds of, of marijuana and, and aliens as you want but until you start affecting that supply chain that's when you start really affecting some of these organizations and so what we found is you, know, you start catching load drivers you start catching stash houses you start catching facilitators and you start getting where that money is at that's when you start seeing the real impact The satisfaction comes from doing a good job, not getting credit for doing the job. You know, when you don't have someone kind of tooting your horn and say, hey, well, look at these guys, they exist, and look at all the great work that they're doing. Um, for us, it's kind of just been a thing that's normal for us. Um, and, you know, hopefully that's something that we're kind of working on changing yeah. a little bit. You know, it's always good to have quiet, humble professionals that do the job. But if you have these guys that are working and nobody really knows that they exist, then do they really exist? I think Border Patrol is one of those agencies where uh, there's so much diversity in, in programs from Horse Patrol, Canine, uh, you have our search and rescue team, you have our, our like SWAT team, yeah. the Board Tag, Board Star. Uh, you also have uh, ATVs, bikes. There's so many things to do. If you love technology, there's a lot of technology that we have. And that's a great transition, you know, and just you want to continue uh, serving your country. This is actually a great way to continue serving your country. So we have our, our initial screening process. So, I mean, it's very basic for, mm -hmm. especially for Bortec. We have an 11 minute, mile and a half run. Uh, we have to do eight mm -hmm. pull-ups uh, with no time limit, 42 sit-ups in under a minute, and then 40 push-ups, no time limit. And then, basic. And then we have a 300 meter sprint that they have to do in, in uh, 52 seconds. You have to have a 90 percentile on your, your firearms qualification, which is a standard border patrol qualification that every, every border patrol agent shot since the, their inception at the academy. So it's the same qualification course that they've shot for years. Um, so they have to get a 90 percentile on that. You know, a lot of people that are in the military have a call in to serve, right? And so, if people want to continue serving their country just in a different capacity, you know, Border Patrol is always hiring. We're always looking for well-qualified candidates to come out and help us out with the problems that we have on the southwest border. Um, as far as special operations goes, like I said, I mean, some of the stuff that we do just runs the gamut of, of what you, would, you wouldn't believe, you know, like I said, you know, doing capacity building in foreign countries to, you know, doing protective details with, you know, high-level, you know, 
for, uh, foreign officials or government officials here, um, meeting a bunch of different organizations, you know, DEA, FBI, HSI, um, even working with our soft community partners. So it's one of those where, you know, we're all kind of serving, you know, mm -hmm. the, the American people. And I think if people want to continue serving their country even after they've left the military, the Border Patrol is a great place to do it. I mean.